Before we get started, I have to clear up a little little discrepancy here. Apparently the other night, or within the last week, because I've been getting a lot of email about this, and I even received one telephone call. Apparently somebody called the Alex Jones broadcast and asked them, asked him why he didn't have me on the air, or asked him something about me. <coughs> Alex Jones said he had had me on the air once before, several years ago, and had to cut me off the air because of the foul language that I used. So on the air tonight, I'm going to tell you, Alex Jones, you are a bold-faced, miserable, stinking, little coward liar. Anybody that comes up here and tries to encroach upon my rights or take away the protection of the Constitution from me and my family is going to get a bullet. And, uh, and, and that's just the way it is. They've stepped on their dicks this time. No matter what they do, they lose, and they know it. Because if they make a martyr out of William Cooper... Let me say that again so there's no mistake about it. You can all tell Alex Jones that I said this, and I suspect he's listening because he does. Alex Jones, you are a bold-faced, stinking, rotten, little coward liar. They've stepped on their dicks this time. No matter what they do, they lose, and they know it. They've stepped on their dicks... They've stepped on their dicks. They've stepped on their dicks. I was only on the Alex Jones show one time. It was years ago when I didn't know who he was, when I didn't uh, realize what a liar and a coward and a sensationalist bullshit artist that he is. Today there is a colony which exists on the planet Mars. It is a United States Russian alien facility. He was on one little FM station down in Texas. He wasn't on all the stuff that he's on now. And I agreed to be on his broadcast. That's when I was doing guest appearances on broadcast years ago. I was not cut off. I did not use any kind of foul language whatsoever. They've stepped on their dicks this time, no matter what they do. I was not cut off. I did not use any kind of foul language whatsoever. They've stepped on their dicks this time, no matter what they do. They've stepped on their dicks this time, no matter what they do. They lose, and they know it. Because if they make a martyr out of William Cooper... He treated me very well, and I stayed on for the whole show. Some of you in Texas know that that's true, because you heard the broadcast and you taped it. Later when I found out who Alex Jones was and what he was doing to the truth and how, what a cowardly liar and sensationalist he really is. There are areas in the moon where plant life grows and even changes color with the seasons. And this seasonal effect is because the moon does not, as claimed, always present the exact same side to the earth or the sun. There is an area that wobbles in and out of darkness on a seasonal basis and it is near this area that the plant life grows. Every time he called me after that, I have always refused to appear on his broadcast. Absolutely refused to lend him any credibility whatsoever by appearing on his broadcast. And that made him very angry. I've also revealed him for the lying, sensationalist, bullshit artist that he is. There's no reason why you or anyone else cannot walk on the surface of the moon or in space in a vacuum without a spacesuit. The most disgusting broadcast he ever did was on uh, New Year's Eve, the year 2000, 1999, bringing in the year 2000, in which he went completely out of his mind and claimed that Russia had launched intercontinental ballistic missiles with multiple warheads at the United States of America and actually panicked millions of people who were 
putting their children and their belongings in their cars and heading for the hills. Nobody has to lie about me, Alex Jones. So I suggest that the next time somebody calls your broadcast and asks them about me, you tell the truth. There's lots of truth that you can tell about me. But don't ever lie on me, buddy, because I'll chop you off at your ankles. I will chew you up. I will spit you out for the lying, stinking, rotten and little coward that successful. you are. And if you should not be successful, don't give up. Attack and attack and attack and attack and attack until he's laying, bleeding on the ground and cannot ever get up again. What you just heard is the voice of Milton William Cooper, Bill Cooper to his followers. My name is Douglas Dean, and I agree with his statement. When you're confronted with an enemy who is all set to kill you, survival facing imminent death is the name of the game. The trouble with Cooper's statement is that he believes everyone is his enemy. He trusts no one. He has stated this in his lectures, and his past record shows his continuous onslaught and attack against anyone who gets in his way. The list is long. Michael Callan and I made the mistake of trying to help Cooper get his message across in a big way where it would do the most good. Instead of the nickel and dime operation, he and his partner, Stan Barrington, were conducting. Promotion, the show business way, takes a lot of time, effort, and money. Cooper was all for it in the beginning, but his innate distrust through the eight months of our association came to a head with his insistent demanding of all the master tapes of his lectures and interviews, which in reality never belonged to him, with the exception of tapes from two small lectures in Phoenix and Sedona, Arizona. Michael and I paid all the expenses to produce the rest of the tapes. Cooper and Barrington agreed at a meeting with Michael and myself at my home that we would not not touch any of the monies taken in from the sale of the tapes. Rolling over the account to take care of future expenses for larger orders of tapes until we had a sizable amount that we could start taking profit from after all the expenses were paid. The monies that I took in are still untouched in the Need to Know Productions account. Michael had three big lectures set up for Cooper, which he still doesn't know about. But Cooper's greed for the instant buck and demands for the master tapes gave Michael an uneasy feeling, which kept him from finalizing the deals that he was setting up. We are both more than happy that he didn't make those commitments. After a very poor turnout for his lecture at the San Diego Convention Center on May 26, 1990, Cooper's half-drunken firing of me was really a big laugh now that I look back on it. I didn't then, and never had, worked for him. On the 28th of July, 1990, at 1.30 in the morning, Michael got a series of phone calls from Cooper over an hour's period. When the phone awakened him, all he said was, Hello, and kept the message unit on record. The following are unedited copies of those calls from Cooper, which are on file with the Los Angeles Police Department. <laughs> Michael, you've read 602-567-6536. This is Bill, your old partner. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, John Hart, one of the richest men in America, is uh, assigned me some bodyguards and some security personnel. And he's really looking out after my interest. And I knew that you were really concerned about that. And I thought that uh, you might want to know that everything's really been taken care of. Uh, and he's going to make sure that nothing ever happens to me that's bad. So, you know, you got my number, you got my address, in case you get any hankering to, you know, talk about the old times, just give me a call. Otherwise, I would suggest to be, you know, sort of careful. Don't ride any fucking Broncos. You know, since you've been uh, hanging out with me, I wouldn't suggest that you go anywhere that you haven't been before. I'd just suggest that you be real careful. 
especially since you since you've been hanging around with me because you know who knows what the government's going to do to either one of us but i guarantee you ain't nobody ever going to hurt me and get away with it i suggest you think about that take care mike i love you and he sends her best wishes and you know little dorothy she ain't talking yet but she loves you too and we're going to make sure that you amount to something even if it's a pile of horse shit you take care of yourself. We're going to be thinking about you all the time. And, you know, we'll call you in a couple of weeks just to see how you're doing. Take care, Michael. We miss you. I mean, we really miss you. And we're going to get you a real good present real soon. Yeah. Bill Cooper jumping into the jug. Now, there are a number of other, number of other phone messages. He left that one. Doug Dean ended up calling the Sheriff's Department. They took his call. They ended up coming out the next day. They investigated the slash tires. And I will state for the record that they were never able to definitively pin that on Cooper. But Dean, as I said, was a man at the time, 69, 70 years of age. And I'm going to play just one last phone message he left to show you truly what a despicable man this was. This is Cooper, now really intoxicated, calling up Doug Dean sometime you in the You dumb son of a bitch. If you don't straighten things out, you the dumbest son of a bitch that ever lived. In fact, you may not even live. So, what are you going to do with somebody? We refuse to be intimidated by this guy. Personally, on a personal level, I would have loved it if he would have confronted me somewhere. But the man knew better, because I would have gone off on him like a proverbial 4th of July fireworks. The wee hours of September the 27th, 1990. Uh, so what is, what is that? Uh, I think the facts are that the reason the people want to... The truth or doesn't he? It's cut and dry. Okay, but Don, I think with the mail that I received, I just want you to know what they wanted to know. They wanted to know... If, in fact, you were telling the truth in the magazine of Bill Cooper's well, I'm not telling the truth, and it's very simple. Cooper can sue me. Right. We'll go to court. That's with a lot of mail also. Bill, are you in the process of suing them? Well, if, if you'd gotten my newsletter number six, you would have seen that because of what UFO Magazine has done, I now have more speaking engagements than I've ever had in my life. Well, that's a nice Issue job. number six, I encourage Vicki yeah. Cooper well. and Don Ecker to continue because now people who never heard my name before want me to come and talk in their Town. Now that's that's my point, Billy. Uh, well, that's we were still in Las Vegas, and I tried to go on head to head with Mr. Cooper, mm -hmm. and he stated that he already had a legal suit filed. Right. And I rest. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I called Billy Goodman back and told him that I would be willing to go on with you that Saturday. That's right. And Billy said that you were then not willing. Well, then he didn't tell you the truth because I tried to call him three times that week to find oh, out. Oh, I never said he was not willing. I never said that, Bill Cooper. Uh, you meant, no, I never said he was not. Understood. Yeah, yeah, no, I no. You back and yeah, no, I never. I said I would see what it would happen. I was supposed to hear from him, and I guess he never reached me. And maybe that's what it was. Well, I was in the process of, of moving into the network situation. But anyway, get it. Oh yeah. So. Or did he not belong on a? So show didn't last much longer that night. Of course, nothing was really a count. And soon thereafter, Cooper moved out of the UFO field and went strictly into the Patriot movement. For a while, he had a shortwave broadcast called The Hour of the Time. Some wag coined it The Hour of the Slime. Before we get started, I have to clear up a little, little discrepancy here. 